tell everyone. He wanted to chat with the Legion of Skanks so bad. Do it! I triple dog dare you, Tony. There is a little bit of a vibe of, a touch of a vibe of. This is how you talk, bro. Yeah. Roll it. All right, let's see uh, this Legion of Skanks. When you hear the pop blast, this is to the podcast. We're all Big J's ass. Legion of Skanks. Fuck yeah, guys. It's time. What's up, everybody? It's the Legion of Skanks podcast. Do people could do a whole day of or? I know there's still so many or is still going, say, but I can't. Or could be its own show. I know. We should build a whole game show called Or. It'd be like when Ethan started Frenemies. It was a gold mine. <laughs> or was like our frenemies. Our peak. <laughs> All right, here they are, the losers. And notice the one who's the least loser is being blocked by me. How telling. Tony Hinchcliffe is a rich, rich celebrity he has a corvette and he wanted to be on skype so bad and he wanted to chat with the legion of skanks so badly that he didn't even realize he's showing me his entire living situation which is so Shitty that I can't believe it. And how embarrassing for you, Tony. Especially after your wife leaving you and you never telling anyone about it. And all the stuff that she's done and the pictures and the stories that she tells me. Oh, yes, Tony. Your wife comes to me with tales. I like to tell it. Every fool, your wife is right here. And I go, oh, don't worry, wife of fool you're here with us now (laughs) and Jules is suspiciously trying to do stuff to her down below (laughs) yep not without consent oh yeah with no consent Tony I'm getting every detail out of that wife that's my new mission and believe me it's gonna work Tony lives in an apartment it's desolate he has not bought any furniture since the move He's got an acoustic bullshit Yamaha guitar, leaned against the corner, sliding glass doors. I could tell the place is shit because of the ceiling fan. It is an old, crappy, low rent, low grade ceiling fan. They don't just put those in rich people's homes and say, oh, we'll change it up. No, no, no. If that ceiling fan exists, the property is crap. Red Band has a nicer house than Hinchcliffe, and you go, oh, but my... No, it makes perfect sense. What does Tony do? Tony has no online, really, didn't anything. did Rogan buy them the houses anyways? Yes, but Rogan had a budget in mind. And Rogan bought Tony, and Tony doesn't even have furniture. You know, what did he do? Just sleep on the floor? He might sleep. This is a guy who could sleep just leaning up against a wall. I mean, he's so sick. You, he could sleep anywhere, probably. He's like a uh, that beta fish we bought. It sleeps on a leaf. You know, it shows when you see a man with no furniture, uh, furniture, and he's lived there for three months. I found the comment you're looking for, by the way. Oh, you did. That's okay. I'll we'll bring see. it up later. Yeah. Um, you know why he's got no furniture? What does he need furniture for? By the time he gets home from those S and M clubs at five a.m., he's dead tired. He just goes right to bed. And then he wakes up and he's at the swing clubs every day. The sick latex, disgusting uh, sex dungeons that he goes to. Well, he thinks Austin rules. This is one of these guys. He fucking hates Austin. But, oh, yeah, because it was my to sit. You know, he's like bashing the comedy store now. Like he forgot that this isn't like a war. So he left L.A. because he wanted to do his Kill Tony show and make money again because they closed the uh, comedy store. And then uh, somebody posted on Twitter or something. They're like, the comedy store is up and running. It's awesome. Sold out shows. He goes, oh, yeah, it must be. And he made some, like, disparaging comment, right, about the comedy store. And you go, 
Wait, I thought that was like your home. Yeah, we're going to play that in a second. Oh, we are. Okay, great. I saved it. Here you go, guys. Austin and Tony Hinchcliffe. We're coming to you from our Zoom show, so we say hello to a portion of you that aren't jerk-offs. Hello. I'm your host, wow. I'm your host Big J Okerson, and Skanks are all here. Of course, we have Davey Smith, the very clumsy Davey mm. Smith. I am. Lock him up. Extra clumsy. <laughs> Uh, the defending Ellis Mania champ, the Puerto Rican rattlesnake, Louis J. Gomez. Hell yeah, doggies. What's up, motherfuckers? That's our guy. The rattlesnake's here. Back the fuck up. You better back the fuck up. A rare guest on our... The only funny guy on that show. Really, the only funny person is Louis. He's a sweetheart. If you don't find Louis funny, you don't really get what's going on here. If you think, like, Big J is funny over Louis, you're a fake comedy viewer that doesn't <laughs> know comedy... Right? I agree. Like, if you think Tony Hinchcliffe is funnier than Lewis, you're one of these people who just, you're being told and led. It might be an awakening to you to even hear this. But that's true. And Dave Smith is not even on the comedic radar. I mean, he doesn't even. He's all the way under there below, like, math teacher as far as how fucking shitty he is, right? <laughs> right, Dave? Yes, he is. Right, like Dave? And your kid? Teacher. Right, Dave? You're worse than a sub. You think you're so fucking cool. You're not. <laughs> uh, you don't want this happening to you like this. Nobody does it like this. All right, let's see. In Big J, remember, if I had to pick or, it's Big J and Lewis. Over these. The, it, look, it's like the smarms versus the unawares. They're unaware. That's why they're, and they're not like cruel. They're not, ter look at this. Nice people, doesn't matter if they did hack or cringe shit. These are good people. These are bad people, doesn't matter if they're funnier. They're not. Than the good people, but that's how people, uh, if you had, you know. These are bad, evil people, can't you tell just by looking at them. These people are fine, even if you don't, you know, vibe with it, right? I think sometimes people just need to hear that. All right, let's watch these assholes. <laughs> uh, we've been doing so many of these shows, just the three of us, but we uh, have a great friend of ours who was able to come on today from the Kill Tony podcast and his one-shot special on Netflix. It's the hilarious Tony Hinchcliffe, everybody. Hi, guys. What's up, buddy? It's Tony not on Netflix anymore. I like oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, we know. And by the way, this is why I get into these people. Well, why do you hate Big J? He called Tony Hinchcliffe hilarious. Doesn't that mean something to you? <laughs> you know, they're allowed to just, oh, he's hilarious. He's amazing. He's great. Well, eventually these people have to live up to that, you know? He's hilarious? When? Where? How? So now I'm suspicious of you. You see how this works? This is how I start going after you. You don't, don't say that, and then you don't have a problem with Red Bar. It was a two-year licensing deal. I licensed it. Oh, you it. owned so it. Yep. That's still way own even it. better. No. Nope. Yep. Wrong. Still got it. Can resell it to some other new streaming garbage site in a couple Damn. years. What a Do you hear this? Do you hear this little lie? This little lie of his. He's going to let it fly. Can't even look at the camera while he's selling this lie. So Tony Hinchcliffe's Netflix special one shot, it was on Netflix for like a year. They pulled it because it was so poor. And it was actually so amateur that they had to get it off the site. Like, it was like a YouTube video. Uh, we've reviewed it many times. Um, Joe Rogan went to Netflix because Joe Rogan had a deal with Netflix. He's a rather big guy, big specials. Joe's responsible for Tom Segura's relationship with Netflix, Chris D'Elia, all of them. Joe goes to Netflix. Oh, yeah, you got to have Tony on. He's great. Oh, yeah, he's amazing. Oh, Tony motherfucking Hinge yeah. Cliff. And they go, okay, well, you're like the comedy leader. Of course, yeah, we'll give Tony. So they did it. And it was so bad. I mean, Joe's other friend specials are so bad. Chris D'Elia and uh, Tom Scott. Did we ever get to watch it? Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. It was so bad, Netflix said, we just can't air this anymore. I'm sorry, Tony. Our relationship is over. And we also, 
for and like then everyone went around worse than Sam Morell or Mark yeah. Norman's YouTube specials. It was like someone just set up like, one camera. It would be bad for YouTube. Like they called it one shot, one shot because they only had one camera and well, had to do it as cheaply as possible. It was great for years. Tony fantasized about one shot. He thought it would be like Boogie Nights or Magnolia. He imagined a steady cam shot following him around like he's De Niro in the casino. And it failed miserably. It was the worst special anyone's ever seen. So bad, Netflix had to take it off. So he still uses it in his bio, just like Josh in the Food Network. Big J brings it up. We'll come on today from the Kill Tony podcast and his one-shot special on Netflix. It's the hilarious Tony Hinchcliffe, everybody. Hi, guys. What's Watch, up, he buddy? knows. It's Tony. not on Netflix anymore. I it was a two-year licensing deal. Oh, I well, you it. owned it. Yep, That's still own it. better. Yep, still got it. Can resell it to oh, some other oh, new yeah. streaming garbage site in oh, a couple years. Oh, can you resell it? Then do it! I triple dog dare you, Toneth. <laughs> Sell it, then. No one's buying a seven-year-old crappy special that's worse than PewDiePie's channel. It failed. It's over. You had one shot. And he named it after the M&M line. I had one opportunity. I better never let it go. Whoa. You only get one shot. Do not miss this chance to blow. You missed it. Cheers. What a gas digital. Hey, hey there you go. <laughs> did you say perfect. streaming garbage? Yeah. So hold on. Did I hear my, my ears perked up? <laughs> Tony, Tony actually rents a uh, an empty apartment to do all of his podcasts. Yeah, it's crazy. Every yeah. time he does a new show, it's just, it's just a corner place. of a homosexual yoga studio that I just got done sweating out some demons at, and it wasn't from yoga. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, so notice his first homosexual self deprecation joke. He does that so every much. time. It's like, are you a transvestite or something? Like, why are you always calling yourself gay? Is it so that the other guys don't call you a fag first? Beat them to their own game. It's the number. That's the first chapter of my book. What a complete asshole. Let's hear some more. <laughs> but it was from the steam room. Yeah. Another spoiler alert. <laughs> how how is Austin, bro? We haven't talked to you since you moved down there. I know it's so much fun. In fact, I remember the last time I was on the show, I was making fun of you guys for being in New York because everything yes. was spiking there and Los Angeles' his numbers were so low. And I was wow. saying you guys live in a dirty steam pot, disgusting <laughs> yeah. wasteland where you're what's called a snob. So Lewis, and this is why Lewis is aware while all these guys aren't. Look at Lewis's face while he asks, How's Austin? Lewis, like me, don't care. For this Austin. It's what we call gay and annoying and anti what we're supposed to do. We don't flock to Austin. Sorry, it's not cool. Right? And there's just something like annoying about it that annoys us all that they flocked to Austin like that. Right? Isn't that just annoying? So there are other comics now that are now starting to turn on the Austin guys who think they're so special with their own club, right? And uh, we're going to hear Tony talk about a little bit about Austin. Then we're going to hear some other people talk about Austin. We'll see how it's going. Everybody's piled on top of one another. And then, uh, you know, that was like bragging about the score before Tom Brady comes back to slam you in the fourth quarter because L.A. got super shut down. And, but anyway, Austin's here. fucking amazing. We're there having we so much fun out here. The food's great. Shows are capacity. Basically, the coronavirus really doesn't exist here. I don't know if you guys have been to Texas or Florida. So here we go. He still thinks it's 1997 and that Austin and Florida are the only places in business and everyone else is afraid to leave their home because the sandworm. <laughs> this is what he thinks. And we're going, Tony, you know, Austin ain't special. Anymore. You could go anywhere in America now. It's fucking open. Now, if Austin is so open again, we're going to cut to Antones now. Let's hear him brag about Austin a little bit more. And then we'll cut to Antones. We'll see how many people are there yeah, in the past few months, but it's so much fun. We're just having a blast and, uh, it's incredible. I have six stand-up shows, seven stand-up shows this week, like packed shows. That's, That's great, awesome. Man. That's yeah, my great. daughter, my daughter packed just moved shows. down there in like August, September. Your daughter moved to Austin. Isn't that something? Oh, yeah, my daughter moved. 
His three-year-old daughter <laughs> moving down to Austin just because uh, Joe Rogan said so, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, my daughter even moved. That's how crazy this pull to Austin is that Joe Rogan has over people. So crazy that Big J's three-year-old daughter moved there to become a star. Wow. All right, let's hear some more. Not for comedy. Oh, cool. Just because like, the city's just like, yeah, it's like for young people. Austin? It's like a cool city, yeah. Yeah, Danny Brown just moved here, the rapper. Uh, a lot of people are moving here, not just for comedy, but just for for life. The speculation. Well, how do you spell. know that? J how do you know that Jay's daughter loves rappers? How did you know that? Did you have a suspicion? A lot of a lot of girls whose dads look like Big J love <laughs> rappers. If you know what I mean. That's true. <laughs> Jay, Jay Jay back to to play. Skip to like eight thirty. Okay, eight thirty. We're gonna get back into uh, Austin. Remember our newest fool, our biggest enemy. Let's hear this, Dave Smith. By the way, very excited to be here tonight as always. It's a uh, Austin, like, because there's not as many weirdos. Like L.A. is like a bunch of fucking freaks. Is Austin like? Oh, yeah, is Austin crazy? Yeah, yeah. I still have my place in Los Angeles. Uh, oh. Um. You know, so I he just literally went, yeah, I still have my place in Los Angeles. This is how you talk, bro. Yeah, I still have my place in Los Angeles. You forget you're on a show that's being judged. I didn't know how things were going to go and this and that. And if California was going to open wide back open and things like that. And I'd go back and forth. But but it has uh, it's been shocking how much I love it. Every oh, single well, day I make. Go new friends cool people you know not even necessarily comedians obviously like really good awesome people here the restaurants are, ridiculous. Say, are you learning like your local people like these people at this restaurant and that kind of so shit right now lewis he's not having it here you can see the man's face oh sorry i did not mean that he doesn't want to hear anymore about how great austin is you know why because she's not moving there and neither are we so, you know, imagine if every time you turned in Red Bar, all I did was talk about how amazing Chicago was. You'd go, that's wonderful. We don't live there. So at the very least, comics, you're being fucking hack and boring. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. I had no idea that Austin has, like, literally the best food anywhere. But and I'm not talking about heard barbecue that. either. Of course, they have great barbecue here, but sushi fucking italian food in austin texas is crazy give me give me forget what's good about austin okay give me the three worst things about there's austin, homeless texas. there are there is a homeless problem here this is the most oh, liberal city in texas isn't that something so they wanted to get rid of the homeless people they thought they were moving to uh you know the deep south you know, they thought they were going to get Confederate flags. They thought this whole thing was going to be the Dukes of Hazard. Turns out they get there. It's like uh, Portland. You know, they're marching in the streets. Black Lives Matter. Um, homeless people everywhere. I mean, they basically moved to a more liberal city by accident. Texas, and uh, okay. for some reason, they're just letting it happen right now. I think they they're going to. They walk yeah, up my, to you. Uh, they walk up to you like five in a clip. Like my, uh, all my buddy, day. Uh, I was just out there, and my buddy Scott, who he grew up there his entire oh, life. Oh, is he going to be voting like, for it's you? Never been anything like this bad. He's like wow. the homeless is like, and you drive by the like under the. It's never been this bad, says his buddy Scott, who is a registered libertarian from Dave Smith's hometown. Pretty big highway and shit. yeah, that, under like, that bridge, they got like little park. tent yeah. cities going. Are on they on aggressive there. homeless? Were they like they'll be shitty yes. with you, or yes. are they? Because yes. I don't play that shit, dude. But then the right. problem is you can't hit them because you'll get fucking AIDS on your knuckles. Right, okay. So it's like you're, it's like you're Lewis, damned if you Lewis do, you're doesn't if you play. Don't. Lewis doesn't play with aggressive homeless people because that's what he you're was destined to become 15? and fought against. His yeah. All right, twelve fifteen, and we're getting closer to our goodies here. All right, let's see, 12.05, ooh, 12.05, pretty cool. Kind of like, well, look, you kind of owe me now, because yeah. I already cleaned your fucking shit. It's the intimidation. But, yeah, it's a very weird It's a very weird position to be in. Yeah, no, fuck that shit. Uh, first of all, if they I didn't touch want my, my window. Car, I didn't want my window wiped with a fucking newspaper, <laughs> smearing they, the funny pages all yeah. over my windshield. 
if they touch my car, I'm going to fucking start honking my Come horn on, and fucking Shale. put my windshield wipers on. Be a rape victim? <laughs> <laughs> I need an adult. I need an adult. Tony! <laughs> help! Help! Ha, 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 ha. I need an adult. Did you get a 12.50? James, give me my I whistle. So. I mean, I thought so. You know. Just keep playing. Oh, okay, it's, it's coming up. There. Tony took a nice swig. Did you see that big swig of tea he just took? <laughs> Anyway, they put dirty homeless water all over your car if you don't pay attention at the red light. Coming up. So, <laughs> all right. So, what's the the second worst thing about Austin? Um, second worst thing about Austin. Jeez, Louise, man. Um, you know, some of the places are a little bit uppity, kind of. It's uh -oh. not an overall thing. Most people are very welcoming oh. and this and that, but there is a vibe of. There is a little bit of a vibe of a touch of a vibe of we don't know you. Oh. Like, what are you doing in our or we do know you. But they it's might, just you know, a, one of the employees might be like, that's a guy from L.A. And there's sort of an anti moving oh, here thing. Sort but of, it's, it's nothing to worry about. I would still move here. It's really no big deal. But it's sort of like an anti don't move here movement. But it's really not a big deal. <laughs> oh, really? Very, very almost unnoticeable. But I, you could understand been, that. Literally, oh, so like, give you, like, you guys are coming when it's like chic, but it's been chic for a while for many of the arts, just not comedy necessarily. But I think I think part of it is like pro okay. I'm just getting so it's open, man. Austin rules. There's no place like it. It's just Austin and Florida, right? Every other place is gay. All right, well let's cut to uh, Tony's show in Austin. Let's see this. Kill Tony episode five oh three, brand new app. We're gonna and that go was fuck cheerleaders. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Uh, 50 I, seconds in, is that right? Yep. 50 seconds in, I think we're going to get to see a shot of that big, enormous crowd, like I told you before, of course. Uh, hold on, let me get back there. Four, okay, we're almost there. Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from Woo! Austin, Texas, and at Talks for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony. Let's clear. All right. Oh, there it was. Yeah. Hold on. We got to go back. A new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for it. There it is. Wow. And it's probably a little dark to see, but you've got one. The, the, the whole stage. I mean, the whole room is the stage. So the room is here. The stage takes up that whole front. And then the bar is here. I'm not kidding. You have one, two, three tables. That is all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people take up that row. And then there's only maybe four more rows in this place. So I don't understand, Tony. Why aren't they shoulder to shoulder? This is the great Austin. You know, at the comedy store, you'd be shoulder to shoulder, 500 people packed in that room. And that was on a bad day. They used to break fire code, be a thousand people in that room, standing, people on people's shoulders, all different levels. And now this?